Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube video. In today's video, we are going to talk about the interview questions that were asked in Cap Gemini. Let us thank our subscriber who has shared us these questions and his experience so that it can be of help to others who are watching. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and let us get started without wasting much time. The first question is, you know, explain about yourself or tell me about yourself. Now, always, you know, remember guys, you know, uh, I'm observing this, uh, you know, challenge uh, with many of our subscribers. So based on the role that you are applying for, so always remember based on your, based on the role that you are applying for like say you are a junior developer role you are applying or you are going for senior developer role or you know you are going for you know lead position so basing on that you might have to customize how you are you know selling yourself it is very important okay so like you know generally i used to you know tell that you know uh, keep your uh, points around, you know, like your experience, you know, your exposure, uh, uh, types of projects and all, right? But so it is becoming more and more, uh, what you call challenge, because, you know, the more exposure you have, if you are in a senior role, the more benefit it will be for you. Okay, so always, you know, uh, talk with respect to that. So if you need a detailed video on project description or tell me about yourself, you can, you know, comment in the comment section. I'll prepare a dedicated video. So I think I have covered many times this point, uh, like you know, how to tell and uh, that thing. But if you need a detailed video, like how to, you know, really tell... Uh, or describe what we have done in project, do let me know in the comment section. I can prepare it out. Okay. So the next question is what have you done in your projects? Again, this is a very important you know, ask that is being asked. So many times what happens is we develop our project, but the challenge is we don't know why we are developing that problem. What is uh, you know the problem that we are going to solve? How is that uh, project or you know report going to help the client who is saying so these answers you should know if you don't know you can ask your lead or whoever is giving you the requirement like say you know why are we you know creating this report what that the you know, challenges we uh, you are facing or you know how are we you know planning to help and all so once you get that you know you will be having a lot of confidence like why you are doing that project how it is going to help the client and all so very important aspect after that we can always you know talk about you know the kind of uh, uh, metrics you have implemented kind of uh, uh, what do you call kpis kind, uh, kind of uh, interactivity you had types of uh, you know, dashboards you have created. So you can talk about all of those in this project. Okay, so very important like this. Next is what is the difference between physical layer and a logical layer? I think many of us know now. Physical layer is the layer where we actually make join. Like say, you know, we are making left join, right join. So if we are making that, we... Uh, that is called as a physical layer. Like if I go to Tableau here, if I go to this data source layer here, so this is all the relationship that we are you know, doing with multiple tables here, like orders, people, and return, returns. But if I go inside it, like say if I want to remove this, I'll just simply remove it. But if I go inside it, like if I click on this open and now if I try to make some connections between these two, this is your physical layer that you're doing and you're establishing joints. I can click on this. I can you know choose what are the different types of joints and all. So this is your physical layer. But if you're doing outside of this, like say I'm removing this, I'm closing this. And if I come out and if I try to make, now you see, this is called as doodle and it is trying to establish relationship between these two. So this is your uh, logical layer. 
okay so that difference you need to remember now again what is difference between index and rank index is simply generating you know the row number based on the data that you have like say i have a subcategory here if i drop it here and if i try to write a calculated field called as index it is simply generating row number for me click on apply and okay so i can simply call that i'll just make that discrete so this is the number now if i add sales it doesn't make much difference to me is irrespective of the order like say now it is in descending i mean there is no sorting order applied on this subcategory but even then i am getting my index number you know irrespective but if i try to sort still it is giving me number now uh, chairs earlier it was different now it, for chairs it is one because basing on this it is but likewise if i try to now add a rank here this is according to the measure that you are specifying say rank of so what is the expression we need uh, like say i'm telling sum of uh, sales and uh, and it descending click on apply okay now if i try to bring it this is with respect to the sales that you have specified simple so you need to remember the difference between these two okay now if i try to you know this clear the sort here my rank will not go see for chairs you are getting six here right but for rank here is 30th you know one here now this will remain standard now even if i try to sort see chairs now has become one but rank is still the one okay so that is the difference between index and rank that you can always explain in the interview so what is context filter again context filter means a filter on a filter so so when you are applying a context filter you are changing the default behavior of a filter shelf like say they are independent in nature like say when you have multiple filters in place they are independent in nature like say you are applying category you no know, uh, and then you are applying sub category so these are independent filters that are working now when you want these two filters to work together when you want to force a filter to apply first then in that situation we go for a context filter so what will happen whatever the data is that is coming out from this filter that data will be passed on to a second filter okay so that difference you need to you know, remember and you, know, you need to talk i think i have uh, created a detailed video on context filter i can place the description in the you know link up the video in the description you can definitely watch that so that is context filter next is what is difference between ind individual and blended access so here when we are creating a view we have options like say dual access blended access and individual access now let's like, say i'm taking my you know region here or we'll take category whatever and i'm trying to bring my sales so this is my one measure right so one measure one axis and same likewise if i try to you know bring my profit here into my view this is my second axis right so these are all individual axes right so one is for sales and another one is for profit but now when i want to merge this two axes into one we have a concept called as a dual axis that we can talk about i can you know use this dual axis now what is happening we are having a common axis or we are merging these two axes into one so on the left side you have dual axis and on the right side it is profit axis but always ensure that you are using this synchronized option whenever you are using this dual axis concept so that it is very clear to understand whoever is using the report so that is your dual axis concept but now dual means two right but suppose you don't want that you know on a single axis i want to play with that so i'm simply taking this profit and i'm bringing on to my axis here now when i release observe how it is so we do not have separate axes now right so on a single axis it is trying to show the values for your profit and sales so this is called as your blended axis so here we, we spoke about individual axis we spoke about dual axis and we spoke about blended axis these three are very important concepts in terms of axes here so next is how to add grand totals to a stacked bar again this is a very interesting scenario often we do it in real time you know so that we are showing a uh, effective information on a chart so i'm just taking my order date and i'm just taking my 
sales on the view. So if I'm just trying to create a bar chart here. So we got bar chart. So if I try to add a region to my color shelf, this is your stacked bar chart, right? Now, if I try to just click on, uh, maybe if I try to bring sales onto my label, these are my values for each year or for each region. How much is for West, how much is for South and all. But user want to see the total sales here. Okay, so total sales, how can we do that? Okay, simply you can click on the access here, right click on that, click on add a reference line. Now, you know, what is the aggregation you need? So measure will be sum of sales. Here I'm just selecting total, that's it. Okay, but here this you need to change, but because now it is per pane, we have only one here, but if I make it per cell, individual cell, it is trying to calculate. Okay, so in the label, we don't need computation, we need value. I'm just doing that and click on OK. So again, you can click on this to format however you need. And uh, maybe I just want to adjust the alignment. Maybe to the center. Like this, now we have adjusted. So this is adding totals to your stacked button. So I've shown you one method. You can try alternate or different methods that are available and let me know if you have found any new. Okay, so next is what are custom charts you have created? Again, I think this was asked in a previous interview as well. So what are the other charts that you guys are creating? It is very important. So try to explore, you know, uh, in Tableau public or, you know, anywhere on the YouTube or on the Google, if there are any other charts that you can talk about, or if you have really, you know, implemented in the project, then you can talk about that. Okay, so we have rounded bar chart, we have sunburst chart, we have butterfly chart, we have lollipop chart and all. Right? So there are, we have gauge chart. So if you are really using that in interview or if you know the process, you can definitely explain him in the interview. So this will be very handy. Next is there were some SQL questions that were asked. I think only uh, he, he remembered only one, one question or one or two questions, but he gave me this. So what will come first group by or order by? So whenever you are writing a SQL uh, query, like say I'm writing, you know, select, you know, sum of sales, comma, department number from EAP, EMP, group by uh, department number, order by department number. Now what will happen here in this case? First, the aggregation will happen at a department level. So for each department, they will try to give aggregation and then first, so when it has to happen, that aggregation at a department level, this group by has to apply, right? Because we have an aggregated field and we have a disaggregated field. So for this to perform, first, there has to be a group by. Then on that field, order by will be done. So the end result will be sorted according to your department number. So that's how the execution will work for this. Okay, so I think that's it from my side in this video. I hope you have learned something new. If it does, don't forget to leave your comment and show some love. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and have a good day.